It is uh, Sunday, the 21st of August, 2022. Looking at my Twitter messages area, and I'm noticing that uh, Bert Archer, the new or newish uh, editor in chief of the Gazette, has prevented me from sending him any messages via Twitter direct messaging. It says you can no longer send messages to this person, learn more. So up until recently I was able to send him messages. The last message I sent him, as we can see, is on August 11th, so 10 days ago. I don't know exactly when he essentially blocked me, but I should say that he has not blocked me in terms of seeing his Twitter account. Um, he's probably muted me, but but from what I could see, he hasn't actually blocked me. So what the last message says, um, and it was a tweet that I sent to Survivor Strong, uh, responding to one of her tweets, um, I can't imagine the Unitarian Universalist Church leadership and the UUA Steichman Elliott Canadian attorney enjoyed how I addressed how they tried to manipulate Canada's blasphemy law and child sex abuse cover-up legal bully. And then I link to a blog post that uh, basically points out to the Unitarian Universalist Association and its statement Elliot Barristers and Bullshitters defamation lawyer, Maitre Marc-Andre Coulomb, that by accusing me of blasphemous libel, blaspheming against the Unitarian Universalist religion, um, for blogging about such despicable crimes as pedophilia and rape committed by Reverend Mack, Wallace Mitchell, and Richard Buell, and other Unitarian Universalist uh, pedophiles and rapists, uh, they essentially deemed uh, such despicable crimes as pedophilia and rape to be sacred and holy to Unitarian Universalism, because that's what blasphemy is. Blasphemy is attacking, that's what's held to be sacred and holy. So if they're accusing me of blasphemy for criticizing their pedophiles and rapists, well then they're essentially saying our pedophiles and rapists are sacred and holy to us and you cannot uh, criticize them. Criticizing them amounts to blasphemous libel against our religion. Um, so that's the last message he got and I don't know exactly when he uh, prevented me from sending him any more messages, uh, but he's, he's been burying his head in the sand for a while. So let's go back to the top here. I haven't been sending the messages all that long. What's going on? Oh, here it is. Yeah, said the wrong. Okay, so we're at the top now. So, Bird Archer, editor in chief of the Montreal Gazette, following 2,226 people, has 3,291 followers, joined Twitter in September of 2009. So he's been on Twitter for a while. He knows the drill. Um, so that's my first message to him. Let's just scroll down a bit to see exactly when I sent it. It wasn't that long ago. May 16th. Uh, so just after I think he was, you know, named. Um, so let's read it. Hi, Bert. I meant to try to persuade the Gazette to clean up its mess before you took over as editor-in-chief, but let it slip. I am asking you to ensure that all past mistakes, in quotation marks, are corrected and the Gazette reports the verifiable facts about Montreal Unitarian cleared to be his cover-up enabler, Sue Montgomery's involvement in Unitarian Universal's child sex abuse cover-up and denial in the coming weeks. For the record, I am celebrating the 24th anniversary of beginning my protest against Unitarian Universalist clergy abuse outside the Unitarian Church in Montreal this month. And... At the end of May and beginning of June, I will be celebrating the 10th anniversary of being accused of violating Canada's blasphemy law for blogging about Unitarian Universalist pedophiles and rapists. Please ensure that Gazette readers read the capital T truth about Unitarian Universalist clergy abuse cover-up and denial and Sue Montgomery's complicity in child sex abuse cover-up and denial in the coming weeks. Thanks, Robin Edgar. And I link to an Emerson Avenger blog post uh, regarding the Gazette. Um, so that's, uh, you know, some months ago now, May 16th. It's now August 21st, so several months went by. Um, so, sent him another message. Uh, let's see when. Uh, go down here, it's a fairly lengthy one. 
uh, May 22nd, so a few days later, about six days later, you know, almost a week later, I sent them another message uh, with a link to a video of my protest outside the Unitarian Church of Montreal. Um, hi again, Bert. I just noticed that you have unblocked me. Yes, he did block me. Like, he blocked me completely for a while. Um, I guess after that May 16th message. So I was blocked for a few days. Um, but he then decided it wasn't such a good idea um, and unblocked me. Uh, he also, by the way, protected his tweets uh, a little bit later um, because he was basically being besieged by a whole bunch of people that aren't very happy with the Gazette. So it wasn't just me that was not very happy with the Gazette. And he eventually protected his tweets. I think they are still protected. I don't think anyone can tweet to him. Um, uh, hmm, yeah, I'm not sure about that because I actually have been responding to some of his tweets. Um, yeah, that's right. I think he did go out of protected status, uh, but I can't remember exactly when, because uh, I have been sending tweets his way, although I'm probably muted, so he may not be seeing them. Um, so, where were we? Um, right, so yeah, I'll go over it again. I just noticed that you have unblocked me. Of course, you have not accepted my Twitter follow request, which would allow me to see your tweets and respond to them with tweets of my own. So I'm pretty much still blocked in terms of public communicate as far in terms of public communications go. Okay, well that's not very well written. I meant to say you know as far as public com uh, communications go, or I could have said in terms of public communications and drop the go. Sometimes I do that kind of thing. Um, please rectify that situation and also ensure that the Gazette unblocks me. Prior to you blocking me after my initial DM, I had no negative attitude towards you. But I have little respect for people who block people in acts of cowardly, willful ignorance and censorship. Uh, please reread the initial Twitter DM I sent to you, as well as the emails I sent to your Tell Bert email account and the Gazette's letter to the editor's uh, email account, then respond appropriately. Uh, well, he hasn't responded at all um, and therefore that's inappropriate so the era of the Gazette not only stubbornly refusing to report the newsworthy stories I bring to its attention but even publishing highly misleading misinformation about me personally and about Sue Montgomery's false accusations about my alleged criminal harassment of her need to end under your leadership if you do not correct past mistakes in quotation marks and report the verifiable facts, I will consider you to be I will consider you to be just as complicit in Unitarian Universalist clergy views cover up and denial as other Gazette in quotation marks journalists. Um, give me a call. I won't bite if you're halfway reasonable with me. Here is the playlist of videos of yesterday's protest outside the Unitarian Church of Montreal. You are mentioned in them. Please give me an opportunity to report that you came to your senses and came around to doing the right thing in the near future. Well, he clearly hasn't. Uh, in fact, he just took another step in the wrong direction. Um, next weekend, I will be celebrating the 10th anniversary of being false accused of blasphemous libel by the Unitarian Universalist religion, in quotation marks, for blogging about Unitarian Universalists uh, who were charged, tried, and convicted of what the UUA's Canadian attorney aptly describes as or described as such despicable crimes as pedophilia and rape, an eminently newsworthy child sex abuse cover-up legal bullying story that the Gazette has yet to report on. Be like Marty Barron and do the Montreal Gazette spotlight story on Unitarian Universalist clergy sex abuse cover-up and denial. Sincerely, Robin Edgar. May 22nd. Uh, so, how many months ago is that? May to June to July to August. Three months ago. Uh, Marty Barron is the current, I believe, uh, editor of the Washington Post. Uh, but he was the editor at the Boston Globe. You know, he came in as editor, and soon after becoming the editor of the Boston Globe, he did do the spotlight uh, stories on, uh, you know, Catholic clergy abuse and cover up in the Nile and so on in, in the Boston area. Um, so, May 31st, sent them a tweet. On Sunday, I celebrated the 10th anniversary of being accused of blasphemous libel by the UUA Stikeman Elliott defamation lawyer for my injurious treatment 
of Unitarian Universalist pedophiles and rapists in the Emerson Avenger blog post and linked to a blog post about that accusation and uh, yeah, hashtag UU sacrilege. So I'm keeping them up to date with what I'm actually doing. Um, June 7th, Montreal Police and Quebec Crown prosecutors may have aided and abetted Unitarian Universalist child sex abuse cover-up efforts by bringing trumped-up criminal charges against Unitarian clergy abuse protester and whistleblower. I'm playing off of a headline there. I'm playing off of one of his tweets. If I go to his uh, tweet, we can see what I'm playing off. Um, Because I do that sometimes. Yeah, so it says Montreal police may have used public health restrictions to racially profile, blah, blah, blah. Uh, so I, I do that. I, I um, essentially play off of uh, headlines in tweets, uh, basically plagiarize them for my purposes, as it were. Um, I dropped a few F-bombs on Steichman Elliott lawyers and UUA leadership in today's protest against UUA child sex abuse cover-up. Legal bullying. Post Canada Day 22 style, uh, sorry, post Canada Day 22 Trudeau salute for charter rights at the Unitarian Church in Montreal. Fuck you, you. Um, okay, well, that's not very polite, but I think I had some reason to say that. Um, I don't swear very often, and I don't use the F word all that often, but, you know, sometimes you got to drop a few F-bombs just to make a point, um, especially when people aren't listening to you. Uh, let's see, I just want to check the time here. Okay, we still have time. Uh, but many of the warts that have plagued third-rate Montreal Gazette journalism, in quotation marks, this decade remained in full and shocking display on the internet. Again, linking to a blog post about Gazette uh, misreporting, uh, basically fake news, um, by Alison Haynes, I think. I did ask you, whoops, left out two, uh, correct the record and ensure that the truth is reported, didn't I, Bert? Misinfo 101, hashtag fake news, hashtag. So this is, again, this is a response to uh, a tweet of Bert himself, and it's playing off of a headline. Let's see what the the tweet says. Uh, There it is. Yeah, the owls, too, need some work, according to Herb Zukowski. Uh, In spite of coaching change, Alouettes remain a bad team after Lay's defeat. Yeah, I think I went into the actual article and pulled a quote from the the actual article for that tweet. Um... And again, you know, modified it for my purposes. Um, July 26. For your information, Quebec court judge Dennis Galliatsidis didn't send me to prison for asking Val Plant a question about her child sex abuse cover-up enabling Deputy Mayor Mont- Sue Montgomery, but he did sentence me to three years of probation. Funny how La Presse never reported my appeal. The Gazette actually did report my successful appeal. Uh... I'll give them points for that, but there's a lot more that they need to do to to tell the truth. Um, Just posted a playlist of my videos of my protest against the Unitarian Universalist Ministers Association, Clergy Sex Abuse, and UUA, that is Unitarian Universalist Association, cover up and denial thereof, outside the Unitarian Church of Montreal. Two videos document yet another attempt to suppress my protest by misusing SPVM cops. Um, And yes, I did send him links uh, to videos of my protest and so on. Um, So he's well aware of what's actually happening, you know, in the current uh, moment. Um, There has been a disturbing lack of reporting on UUA misuse of Canada's blasphemy law and batshit crazy child sex abuse cover-up legal bullying by Montreal Gazette journalists so far this decade, uh, making the point that over the last decade, you know, since I've been falsely accused of violating Canada's blasphemy law by the Unitarian Universalist Association in child sex abuse cover-up legal bullying. No Gazette reporter has ever actually reported on that very newsworthy story. And I used the Canadian media failed hashtag, which I did not invent, but I'm making good use of. Um, so that's July 27th, so about you know, a little less than a month ago. Um, 
A woman entering the Unitarian Church of Montreal expresses her lack of appreciation of my whistleblowing about UUA child sex abuse cover-up and denial the day after National Whistleblower Appreciation Day. National Whistleblower Appreciation Day, hashtag, hashtag UUA, hashtag UUism, hashtag UU Sunday. And I have a link to the video of that event. I see i got about five minutes of recording time left. Um, Karen, in quotation marks, kicks and throws protesters' signs protesting Unitarian Universalist Church misuse of blasphemy law in batshit crazy UUA child sex abuse cover-up legal bullying and into bike lane while calling SBM cops to get him arrested. Uh, so I'm basically, again, I'm playing off a headline here. It's almost certain. Uh, let's see what the actual uh, headline of the I'm responding to is. There it is. Bear rings video doorbell at South Carolina home. So I'm just having a bit of fun here. It's a CTV News thing. Um, and I actually sent that to CTV News, but I made sure that uh, that uh, Bert Archer saw it too. So let's go back. So I do that kind of thing, playing off uh, current headlines, you know, giving my own headlines about Unitarian Universalist the clergy abuse cover-up in the Nile. Um, and CTV News has has aided and abetted Unitarian Universalist clergy sex abuse cover-up in the Nile by basically publishing brazen lies fed to them by Sue Montgomery and never properly correcting the record. Um, Sue Montgomery was the court reporter for the Gazette, the judicial reporter. She called herself the justice reporter. Uh, essentially, what it comes down to is you had a little clique of court reported journalists. You know, they were for different media, but they're all basically colleagues and friends. You know, so so when Sue Montgomery uh, had me charged with criminal harassment, you know, she basically had all of these journalists in her pocket and fed them, you know, all kinds of bullshit and and they swallowed it whole and made zero attempt to get the other side of the story from me and publish Sue Montgomery's lies um, including lies about sex abuse in the Unitarian Church uh, Reverend Mac Wallace Mitchell of UUCSWs uh, could be described as a hebophile rapist in that a teenage Tibetan refugee has been raped by him but Montreal Gazette justice reporter Sue Montgomery never reported on the UUA's misuse of blasphemy law and child sex abuse cover up legal bullying. So again, almost certainly playing off of a headline there. Let's see what it says. Um, uh, -dum -dum. Oh, another tweet. Bus stop rapist Michael Cox tried to break out of federal penitentiary, blah, 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 blah. Um, so essentially, yeah, playing off of that uh, headline and making a point that the Unitarians uh, have their own problems with uh, t uh, with rapists who rape teenage children and even preteen children. Um, so reminding uh, Paul Cherry, the crime reporter, about that fact. Um, Paul Cherry did write some quite uh, misleading uh, articles about me. Paul Cherry being the crime reporter for the Gazette, essentially another colleague of Sue Montgomery uh, before she was let go from the Gazette from what I think is a probably uh, because she had a fairly serious ethics breach involving me. Um, so, yeah, again, I think we already read this. We're coming to the end of a 20-minute segment of video. we got about a minute and 25 seconds left. Um, so what else to say? Uh, I've been meaning to get back to Bert, put a little bit more pressure on him, but not immediately because basically nothing's happening in terms of the Unitarian Church of Montreal, church services and so on. They shut down in the summer. Uh, they basically, the minister's on vacation, on sabbatical. Um, she probably wouldn't be available for comment and so on. So I'm just waiting for church services to start up again in September. And at that point, I will start uh, trying to ensure that the Gazette reports uh, what the actual truth is instead of lies fed to it by Montreal Unitarian uh, clergy abuse cover-up enabler, indeed uh, child sex abuse cover-up enabler, Sue Montgomery, who is the former justice reporter for the Gazette, who has involved herself in efforts to shut down my protest outside the Unitarian Church of Montreal since the mid-2000s, and who, before that, uh, going back as far as December 2000, uh, refused, uh, stubbornly refused to report 
uh, newsworthy stories that I brought to her attention, uh, including in 2012, the blasphemous libel accusation the UUA brought against me that I brought to her attention. That's it for now.